Okay, so let us call the meetings to order. And in fact, um, we are having three simultaneous meetings this evening. Yeah, you can have uh, the, You can hear me okay? No. Yeah. You got it louder. Yeah, well then. No, you, no, for, yeah, the, you for the audience. Project. I project. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, planning Board, the Select Board, and the Finance Committee are all having joint meetings tonight. So I will read the introduction uh, that will suffice for all three boards, and then all three boards can call themselves to order and identify board members in attendance. So here we go. This meeting will be, it is now 7 o'clock, 7.01, on September 30th, 2021. The meeting is being held in hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. <laughs> Members of the public with particular interest in specific items have, should <laughs> make plans for in-person instead of virtual attendance accordingly. And for pur purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield hosts the meeting in our main meeting room at our Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation noted on our DeerfieldMA.us website. So I will call to order the planning board and members in attendance are uh, starting on my stage. Andrea, Andrea Leibson. Kathy Sylvester. Annalie Wolfcool. Denise Mason. And and, and oh yes, and Mary and Rachel are and 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 Mary and, and Rachel Blaine. I saw yes, excellent. So we have a quorum of all of our members. Um, select board, would you like to call yourselves to order and identify members? Dave, I think you're on mute. Um, I, Carolyn, am here, and Dave Wolfram is here. Excellent, thank you. And Julie, would you like to call the Finance Committee meeting to order? Not really. <laughs> um, I, I actually, are there any members of the Finance Committee there in attendance? Yes, yeah, yeah. four, four of us. There's four of you? Oh, okay, yeah. so we do need to call it to order. Um, in that case, we'll call the Finance Committee meeting to order. Uh, 7.03 p.m. Julie Chalfant. Can you all say who's there, please? James Champion. John Kutcher. John Boston. Skip Olmstead. Thank you. We're not going to be able to hear them. <clears throat> um, and Can for... Yes? So if the board members in the audience would like to say anything, they do need to go to the mic because it's very yeah. difficult for people at home. So anybody in the audience that wants to speak needs to go to the mic. Yes. Thank you, Jen. Um, and guidelines at this point in particular, primarily for the, the um, members of the, the boards is that we are working to speak one at a time following our Deerfield Code of Conduct, to be respectful, considerate, courteous. Uh, we want to be concise and non-repetitive and recognized by the chair. Um, and Mary, can you uh, take us through the minutes of August 23rd, 26th, and September 13th? Uh, I move that we uh, accept those minutes. Um, hopefully everyone has gotten a copy of them. Hopefully everyone had time to review them before the meeting. And that was seconded by Kathy. Kathy. Uh, any discussion? No. All, right. <clears throat> All those in favor, maybe Kathy, we'll start with you coming around the table. Kathy Wittroba, aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. 
Uh, Rachel and, and Mary? Hey, Mary, clue to your eye. Lost Rachel. I don't know where Rachel is. Oh, that's okay. Uh, and in the meantime, Annalie Wolfcool, I. So um, these minutes are approved in total with, I guess, one absent vote. <clears throat> All right. Um, for old business, we now have two public hearings. And as was posted on the um, agenda that was posted on the website, our process for the public hearings will be that the board that is has presented the concept of the bylaw changes will be making a brief overview presentation, brief being um, two to four or five minutes, close thereabouts. Um, we then would have public comments, as we stated earlier, um, absolutely imperative for everyone to come to the microphone and we'll just wander up there um, so that everyone in the building and out of the building can hear. Um, please also state your name and address. We're looking for one comment per person with a two minute maximum um, recognized by the chair as last week I'll go back and forth between Zoom and people in town hall. Um, comments or questions will occur, and at the uh, then there will be closing statements by the presenter, again, approximately two to four minutes. Um, and the planning board would then vote to close the public hearing. Um, and we would have our discussion and deliberations with noting that during public comment time, um, this is an opportunity for the the, the members of the public to um, give us their input, at, but it's not a Q&A. We won't be having back and forth questions and answers. But during our deliberations, if there have been questions, we will try to have made note of that and we'll um, answer the questions then. So we'll have our um, deliberations and then vote on our final decisions. Um, so <clears throat> our first item on the agenda is the tourism over overlay map. And um, as a sort of a, an intro, a reminder that at our last meeting on September 13th, we did vote to move the article, the verbiage of the tur tourism overlay district to the warrant for our special town meeting. And that did, at that point, include lots uh, 128 and 135, which is Berkshire Brewery, Brewing Company and the Leary lot. Tonight, our public hearing essentially is for the map, um, as, in fact, the map is the accompanying uh, article, zoning regulation that needs to be approved. Um, this map really does need to mirror the article and the, that has been moved to the town hearing or the, to the um, special town meeting. Um, everyone understands that. Thank you. Um, I'll also make note that um, in the time subsequent to our last meeting, there has been recognition that one section of the tourism overlaw bylaw, section 4953, um, was uh, in need of some clarification. This is a section that refers to the applicability of the bylaw. And um, the last two sentences in that section, it's a relatively small section, um, are being stricken it, to make it abundantly clear that the zoning bylaws underlying um, the tourism overlay district, those bylaws will remain in, in, in effect, and the tourism overlay bylaw um, is essentially the, uh, as I like to think of it, the, the underlying uh, zoning bylaws are the hot dog, and then the, the mustard on the top is the, is the map, mm -hmm. is the overlay district. Um, and so the, the zoning bylaws absolutely will uh, stay in effect with the new tourism overlay um, 
map on the top. Um, so with that in mind, I will read yet again another um, another notice. This one's somewhat smaller. Um, that I am calling to order the uh, notice of the hearing for our tourism overlay map um, pursuant to general laws chapter 40A section five on our potential amendment to the Deerfield Zoning Bylaws chapter 179 by amending the current zoning map to include a new zone entitled Tourism Overlay District to encourage development of entertainment venues with said new overlay district to enhance tourism while preserving open space, forested areas, and other scenic views. Parcels affected by this change are noted in the full text of the proposed article, which may be viewed uh, in the foyer of our municipal offices or on our website, www.deerfieldma.us. And the correction that I mentioned just previously is a correction that will be, uh, it was too late to be included in the actual printing of the warrant, so it's a correction that will be made on the town meeting floor. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, a member of the select board, do you want to introduce the map? I believe Dave is. You have to unmute Dave. He's not muted. For some reason, his volume's not working. Oh, oh, geez. Can you call in on your phone? I don't think a meeting is a meeting without some technical difficulties of some sort. Every time. Dave, Dave has the actual description. Oh. The actual, well, what are you looking for? And I've got, I mean, I have the, I have the, well, the actual description. Just tell him to call in. I did. He's, in. Gonna, he's doing it. He has his phone in his hand. I'm just waiting for him. Aaron? Yep, he's working on it. Do you know what he's asking for? Because I might have it in front of me and I could read it. I, I believe it's from the veterinary clinic. Oh, no, I don't have that description. Okay. Think. Thank you. Although we do have the map, but. Well, the veterinary clinic, maybe the veterinary clinic. Right. Still there. Hmm? I think. I think. Is from 116 and a little bit early. Okay, I'll have to go. David, I just texted you the number. If we're continuing, how about I read it to you and then you can dial it in? So it's dial this in your phone. One. Nine two nine two zero five six zero nine nine. And the meeting ID, nod your head when you get to the meeting ID. Uh, maybe in the meantime, while they're doing that, um, 
planning board, we need to discuss whether or not our next meeting, which will be October, uh, November. November 1st, would be hybrid, um, in person, or um, both. Hybrid or Zoom only. So, given the hybrid, I'm done with the hybrid, but I do like it in person. Uh, can you speak up, please? Yes. I, can't. <laughs> I, I do prefer. I thought tonight was online. I'm so sorry, everybody. I was a little late because I opened my computer and there everybody was here. Uh, so I got here as soon as I could. Um, I, I like the in person. I think we're we're we make a, a better community when we're face to face with one another. The hybrid opportunity is uh, in this in its ideal great, um, but when it is gimpy, it's really a, a drag. Um, however, it does seem to be the way. So I, I think hybrid is still a good matchup, even if it's a, a stress. Our but I'd rather that we were. To my knowledge, our next our meeting in December or in Jan <laughs> November. November. Uh, FERCOG is coming to talk about an overview of their activities. They will be on Zoom. Other than that, I don't know of other agenda items. Okay. Okay. Hear me now. Okay. Hear me now. Oh, hold that. Yeah. Hold it. Okay. Okay. Blow up in a minute. <laughs> Got a good echo. Got a good echo. Go ahead, Try Dave. Try it again, Dave. <clears throat> David, I think you're on to tell us the description of the tourist overlay map. Not come in person. No one could read it up. Okay, can uh, Jen, can you put up the map? Yeah, sure. Okay, um, the overlay district is designed to incorporate uh, Can we get past this? I'm going to come into the town hall. Um, Annalie, could you move on to something else and then Dave can come into the town hall? I think if he turns the volume off on his computer, that might help. Oh, he's gone. Never mind. Casey? Yeah. Can you go out there and do star six on the main? We started on the star six pound. On the pound? Yeah. Oh, my God. I I don't think it works when there's some people with masks and some without, and some people are high risk. And mm -hmm. um, and obviously, even though we all want to be together on Zoom, we're actually more together because we don't have all this technical stuff going on that we're having in this hybrid fashion. I I don't like it, but um, it's reality to live with right now. Thank you. Um, other comments? Yeah, Cindy? I mean, ideally, I'd like to be in person, but I also want to be respectful of everyone's time. And it's 20 minutes after, and we haven't really started the meeting. So, you know, because of this, I would prefer doing Zoom until we can get it together. Other <laughs> thoughts? I concur. I agree with both of those reasons. Yeah, absolutely. So, could we have a motion regarding our meeting format for November 1st? I make a motion that our next meeting, November 1st, is on Zoom. I second. Denise yeah. Mason. Mm -hmm. Andrea, second. Andrea, seconding. Any other discussion? Um, Kathy Vitroba? Kathy Vitroba, aye. Andrea Liebson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Rachel Blaine, abstain. Uh, Anne Mary? Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. 
and Annalie Wolf Cool Eye. So our 11 1 21 meeting will be remote only. Um, maybe I'll do a little bit of mail then. Um, to ZBA Greenfield, uh, pieces of mail about special permits being granted to allow a four foot reduction in a setback for a front yard on Power Square and granting a special permit for solar installation on Conway Street. Um, of additional interest perhaps to members of the Deerfield town is um, sunny days, uh, marijuana, I don't think that's, I'm sorry, that's not the correct word yeah. for them. Um, uh, is having a community outreach meeting regarding their marijuana establishment proposal on Greenfield Street. It's on Thursday, October 14th at 6 p.m. Um, Jen, you're somewhere. How can people get the uh, Zoom link for that? It's not posted on our calendar because this is not something that the town is sponsoring, so therefore we wouldn't have it necessarily online. So it's posted in our foyer. And it is also going to be posted in the paper. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So the Zoom link for, for residents who are interested uh, can be found either in the newspaper or in our foyer. What date and is it? It's on um, October 14th at 6 p.m. And it, it is our by... Zoom account because we can't, they can use our resources. So it, it's such as if we had open town hall. Um, they would be able to have the meeting here. So it is one of the town's Zoom accounts, but they totally run it and it's not sponsored by us. And it's just part of the CCC's requirements. Um, Jen, do you Thank think you. we could put it, uh, since Lisa's, Lisa Mead's on, could we ask Lisa if it would be appropriate to appoint, uh, to put it on our calendar? That's what um, I had talked to Casey earlier about that. And because it isn't a town sponsored event, I mean, we can put it, it's, it's really their responsibility to advertise it because it's something that they're doing a community outreach. But Lisa, definitely. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you can put it on your calendar, but I think you could put it on the web page uh, in the front as an announcement and make it very clear that it's not a town sponsored event, but it's a public outreach. Thank you. I was just worried being in the four years or, I mean, not a lot of people get the newspaper anymore and just being in the four year is not particularly handy to people. I believe they're also sending it to a butters. So okay. they're going to be doing their mailing just like we would. It's well, if, if, if Lisa is feeling that it is possible to have it posted just as a non-town sponsored event, I think that would be ideal. We want to encourage public engagement. Yep. That would be great. Cool. Or if people Thank have you. questions, people should be asking questions. So, um, Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. And that's the end of our, yes, Lisa. Great. Thank you. The end of our mail. And we see that Dave... There's Dave. Dave appeared <laughs> very quickly. So, David, um, if you'd like to come up in front of the microphone, because it's very hard to hear. And um, you are given the introduction to the tourism overlay map. You want to use this mic? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Good evening, uh, Dave Wolfram, Board of Select, Select Board, Town of Deerfield. Uh, I want to start discussing our proposal for the entertainment. Okay, the entertainment overlay uh, with our discussions is to, can you, everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Um, on Zoom even? Carolyn, you can hear me? Yes, yes, perfect, okay. Dave. Very good. Okay, um, currently we have three breweries in the Town of Deerfield. And what we wanted to do is try to incorporate an area on the 5 and 10 corridor and part of the uh, center of uh, South Deerfield to enter, uh, expand what we can do in this area. The, uh, the overlay is, uh, a lot of it's on 5 and 10. The, uh, 
myself here. Is this help? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this the south part is um, including um, basically where the barbecue area is mm -hmm. and coming into the center of town and then moving through uh, the uh, Larry lot uh, and incorporating uh, Berkshire Brewing. One on five to ten on the east side mm -hmm. is the property that currently is owned by uh, Treehouse mm -hmm. Brewing. Mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, other side is uh, five to ten. That is property that is from the uh, veterinary clinic south to 116, uh, which that's the only area that's actually zone for entertainment right at the moment. Um, and then uh, going across uh, 116, this area, uh, to have that included. And then skipping down to this area, uh, which is uh, currently Yankee Camp. And then across the street there, a little bit is to the east is? Yes. This is uh, North Street. So this is, uh, I believe the property is currently owned by Sheckley. Uh, he owns the uh, property where the barbecue place is and the, the vacant lot that's right behind it. Then we'll be coming into the center of town. Uh, this is the Leary lot here. And uh, this is Berkshire Brewing here. So it'll be this area. Thank you. I shouldn't be touching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Thank you. But, you know, this is just to, you know, we've been looking for ways to enhance the, the center of uh, South Deerfield and bring in, and we figured by the tourism that we have from Yankee Candle, the potential tourism from the three breweries, it would be the ideal time to make these uh, overlays and put them in place. And uh, for the, especially for entertainment. Thank you, Ms. Wolfram. Um, so this would be the time then when we would be having public comment. So I'll start with public comment from one person in the audience and with a reminder, you did great with the microphone there, Dave. So um, if anyone in the audience would like to raise their hands and come up to make a comment about the map. Mr. Decker? Two minutes. Hmm. Yeah. Map back, up, please. map back? Yeah. Jen, can we get the map back? You don't have to push anything. Just... If you can identify yeah. yourself with your address, please. I just ask if she can put the map back the map. up. Map. Here it comes. It's coming. It's there. If you could identify yourself with your address, please. I'm sorry. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Yes. you might be able to do it, Bob. Right. Mr. Decker, speak right into the microphone. The point that I'm trying to make tonight is this early district is incomplete because it doesn't take in other prime properties in the town of Europe. And we're going to walk up the, not walk, but we're going to crawl up short. Okay? And I can't see the bottom here. I guess a couple of cracks. These properties here are not included. So the properties that are, you know, where different plastics used to be, uh, where Cumberland is, uh, where the uh, really different uh, clinic is, where the other clinic is, uh, are not included. And I'm talking about the properties from the railroad tracks west is not included. All right. Now, originally where the Family house 
houses are on M Circle. Okay, that was originally all commercial property, but because of the way the zoning bylaw was set up years ago, people could turn around and build two family houses in it. Okay, that should be included because someday those might not be there. The property is going north, uh, I think, is owned possibly uh, by uh, the Rokavitzes and the Sadaskis, and it may be some other people. But this piece of property here, 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 and here, that lots one, two, three, and four uh, are not zoned in your new overlay district. Okay? You have included the property across the street, but these haven't been included. Now, if I'm correct, and I think I am, the sewer line goes across Route 5 there, and these properties can be serviced by the sewer line. Okay, and they're also serviced by water. Why they're excluded, I don't know. Okay, go to the other side of the street. Mr. Decker, thank you. If you can continue quickly, or if we're trying to keep it at two minutes for everyone. Uh, number 106 is the bank. The property behind it is owned by Google Industries. That's not included. Uh, Mrs. Rocky owns a house. Dutch Turner owned a house there. That prime commercial property, they're not included. The, where uh, the property on Conway Street is not included. Uh, it should be. The rest of this property here should be included. Now we can go right up the street and keep, uh, keep Well, so your your point is that the map is inadequate and, and not covers enough. Thank it's you. Only taking care of certain selected parcels and it sparks a spot zoning. Okay. And Thank you. I just I don't necessarily disagree with the zoning. I just want to make sure that all the properties and all the owners are included fairly equitably. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, people, uh, is there any? Oh, Mr. Hilchi, you have a hand up. If you could identify yourself. Yes. Good evening, Tim Hilchi, 330 Greenfield Road. Um, it's my understanding that uh, at least two of the uh, <clears throat> properties that are included in this are um, properties that typically come to the select board to ask for special permits for entertainment related events. And there's a long history with, with the select board. And um, a third property that's included in this district is Treehouse, which has a track record in other communities for doing entertainment events. So I think the logic of this is to, since it's a new thing for Deerfield, experiment with people you know and have a track record of being responsible citizens. And then if this works, expand the district in a logical way that might address some of Mr. Decker's uh, interest in including things. But it seems to me to be a reasonable way to start this experiment. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Um, yes, sir, if you can come up and identify yourself. Trustee Two Baker Crossroads. Um, I wanted the definition of entertainment, especially for the treehouse. Is that going to be going to be able to start put the hotel up or campgrounds or all sorts of different things? Is that considered? Do you uh, speak louder, please? A little bit louder. Let's speak up. I know you can. <laughs> definition for entertainment, he is uh, certainly asking. So I wanted to know the definition of entertainment and what it all includes. Thank you. Do we have other questions on Zoom? Thank you. We'll address that when public comment. We hope we will address that. <laughs> I don't see anybody else's hands raised. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Cambius, if you can come up. Hi, uh, Jim Cambius, uh, 314 Greenfield Road. Um, uh, in light of the meeting that you mentioned in Greenfield about a marijuana related business, I note that the definition currently given for um, uh, by right uses of this um, tourism overlay district could very well be uh, uh, legally uh, uh, construed to include manufacturers of things like marijuana edibles. 
like a marijuana-related business, like the one that is proposing to locate there. Um, because it's, um, it mentions um, um, you know, winery and, and, and meaderies, et cetera, but it, it, you know, it also mentions, there's a, there's a um, uh, yeah, here we go, um, uh, processing of beverages or products, uh, including but not limited to coffee and non-alcoholic beverages. So in other words, marijuana edibles, I think, would be a product that would fit the definition of the tourism overlay district, and thus a marijuana-related business would then be able to have festivals, car shows, um, um, uh, concerts, um, um, et cetera. And I think a lot of people in town might not like that, including me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good conclusion there. Um, anyone on Zoom? Um, Carolyn? Could we just have Lisa? Um, I, I think the tourist overlay district was to take the synergy of the three breweries and, um, you know, make it work for us in town. So I would like Lisa to just respond to, um, you know, the marijuana question. Um, certainly, Ms. Mead. Uh, through the chair, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of all of the boards uh, that are present. Um, the marijuana has a specific um, definition and section in the bylaw, and therefore um, it wouldn't be included in the list of allowed uses uh, in the tourism overlay district that the board moved to recommend last week. So. Um, because it's specifically listed as a separate use, um, it would have to be on its own allowed in the district, which it um, does not fall under the overlay. Thank you, Lisa. You clarified it um, for us very clearly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there, um, yes, if you would like to speak and identify yourself, please. I'm Melissa Perot at 74 North Main Street. I have an invitation here to um, a meeting that says <laughs> the town of Deersdale for a site plan review of a property located at 71, which I believe is the church. Excuse me. Yes, if you're addressing that, that will be later in our agenda. Well, later in your agenda. Yes, I'm, yes. Thank so you so much. Hold tight. Thank you. <laughs> is there someone else from, uh, yes. Ms. Remillard, if you can introduce yourself. Hi, Jennifer Remillard, 26 Conway Street. Um, I think, sorry, could you not hear me? Um, I think a lot of people are under the assumption that they're going to just be allowed all of these rights. Um, there's still the site plan review process, I'm pretty sure of, that's included in this in front of the planning board. There's also the regular processes that have to be uh, maintained and gone through in order to have any of these um, items approved. Even though things may be, quote, by right, um, there's still the legal process through the community and through the town board. So I think a lot of people need to understand that the regular standing regulations do not go away just because something is allowed with this change of a bylaw. There's also, as um, Attorney Mead mentioned, you know, a separate and the, or a separate law for the marijuana overlay district. So just because something is encompassed under that does not negate the entire process that the community has in process. Um, I really highly suggest to those who have a lot of questions, read the current bylaws that are already in existence prior to Monday's meeting so that they fully understand the entire process before they make their vote. I think the planning board has been wonderful in holding the public hearings, and I want to thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, do we have any Zoom comments? I don't see any. And any other comments in town hall? Yes, Mr. Decker. Since no one else is coming, we will allow a second comment. I made the comment that this was experimental. Once this passes, people that own the property are going to have a right to do the things that are spelled out in the overlay district. 
and they can't be taken away from us later. Once, once it's going to be grandfathered in, it's going to be there forever. And uh, I think that, I really think this is premature. I think all the commercially uh, entertainment things, all the way up to five and ten should be included. And it should be fair and equitable and not just certain spots. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, in we either have, audiences, do we have, we oh, have a uh, comment? Yeah. Uh, Lori. Uh, Lori Busada, can you identify yourself? Hi, Lori Busada, 193 North Main Street. I'm very excited about having a vibrant town with entertainment offered. Um, my only concern is I've been to lots of music festivals and even after the set um, performers are over, there's usually gas gatherings of people playing music, especially if there's camping going on. And as an abutter, I just wonder if it might be um, reasonable to put a curfew time, a quiet time hour onto the camping aspect of the permit entertainment aspect of things. Thank you, Lori. Uh, we'll address that in our comments. Um, uh -oh. um, yes, Mr. Wolfram. Okay, I, uh, I appreciate Mr. Decker's concerns about some of the areas, but when we were looking at the overlays, we were looking at rather specific areas that had one direct access to Route 5 and 10, on the 5 and 10 corridor uh, and uh, areas that were not residential currently. So that's why we established the areas that we did when we were developing the map. Um, as everything else, we all know, things are fluid. And we tried to do the best we could in doing this particular overlay uh, and as Jennifer, so after said, you know, this isn't just granting people to do whatever they want to do. Uh, there's still all the processes that everybody has to go through, uh, to the planning board for site plan reviews, there's going to be, uh, and all that. So it's, you know, it's just not a carte blanche type thing. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> I'm Judith. I'm Judith Rathbone, 131 North Main Street. And um, in speaking to many people in the last two weeks, um, this issue actually did come up. And while I spoke in favor of this tourism district, I do want to represent what people have said to me, which is that they're afraid that the town is going to become a place known for getting plastered because their tourism is totally tied to their breweries. Um, Alcoholism uh, kills twice as many people as opioid deaths, and opioid deaths are horrifying. Um, I know from the gambling issue, they've done a lot of work on responsible gambling. I assume the town will be taking an approach on responsible drinking, along with these breweries. Um, so I just want to uh, represent people's um, opinions on that, having lived in Amherst right next to the university and having seen firsthand the horrors of student drinking, um, people carrying um, unconscious people down the street, et cetera, um, I guess that I'm thinking my position through again, too. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Other comments? Uh, Planning Board, does it feel like a time to close public hearing? Yeah, I'm making a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, so Kathy Sylvester is making a motion to close, close the public Rachel hearing. Second. second from Rachel. Any discussion? Okay, so um, uh, Kathy, which I will have a vote. Closing the hearing. Closing the hearing. Kathy, for the aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. 
Introduce Mason I. Rachel Blaine I. And hey, Mary Clutie or I. Can I ask who moved? I'm sorry, I didn't hear who moved, who made that motion. Thank you. And Emily Wolf Cool I, so it carries unanimously. Um, um, so um, for our deliberations, if I can begin, um, Lisa Mead, I think you still are on board there. If you could address the question of the entertainment definition, or if you want to think about that and we'll come back to you. <laughs> well, no, I, I would, first of all, I'd like to, um, I guess I would say two things. Um, it's my understanding that the board already uh, voted on this uh, bylaw text amendment uh, last week. So that's not really what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the map change. Uh, nonetheless, in order to provide information to the, um, to the person who asked that, uh, it's actually not entertainment. If you look at the uses allowed under section 4954, uh, there's a significant um, number of uses, including industrial uses uh, um, under a certain square footage um, and light manufacturing uses, uh, certain hotels, uh, certain kinds of festivals, art-based events, uh, commercial recreation, concerts, uh, professional events, uh, municipal events, farmers markets, uh, and, and that that's kind of the list. Um, I would like to also, if I might, Madam Chair, uh, comment on the fact that there was a, a comment related to uh, controlling the camping activities. Uh, that particular use is a special permit use under that section that the board is recommending last week. Uh, and the uh, special permit granting authority, um, which I believe is the planning board, uh, would be allowed to limit it um, through its special permit process as to times. So um, I think I, if that's what you wanted me to do, there's your answer. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, so planning board uh, deliberations <clears throat> about the, the map and the discussion. And your thoughts? Recognizing that, again, this is um, looking at <clears throat> accepting the map to the amendment or the article that we already approved last week. Um, Yes, Kathy? So I appreciate Mr. Decker's comments. Um, I think I think that uh, we don't want to get into spot zoning as we've talked about before, but I, I think that the select board is trying to go about this in a very careful way, and I support that we start small and then see how it goes before we uh, open it all up. So I would support it being the map being as it is. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's the only thing. Can, can I, I have a question? It doesn't seem um, like Berkshire Brewery is included. Well, it is. Plot, it plot is. 135. It was, it was included it's not last in yellow week. on the map. It's not. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I just it, looked it up on the assessor's map, and it's, it's lot 135. And that's not highlighted on the. It wasn't on the it map. Was, it wasn't on no. the map. The map on. Was, you're it is included on the, on the map that we're proposing tonight. In fact, it's. Yeah. The, yeah. the yeah. reason we're meeting tonight. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so okay. that's a, a good catch on what you could not actually see. <laughs> okay. But it is included. It is included. Okay, thanks. Uh, Denise, you were going to speak? Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I was, excuse me, I was just going to say that I agree with that. And I, you know, I believe Trevor McDaniel said, you know, it's better, it's better to walk before you run. So I agree. I think it's much better to start small. And, you know, we can always make amendments to the bylaw after, you know, we see, you know, test it out. But I think it's, it's a lot more difficult to retract. So to, to, you know, to do it too much and then realize that we made a big mistake. Um, no. Mr. Decker, excuse me, but we are having our deliberations now. So, pardon me? What, no, what I could see was that that, that that section of it, it was outlined, but it wasn't colored in. So oh, it's not colored in. It's not, that's the map you presented public hearing. And that's going to be what you're going to have to live with. Well, yeah. Jen, is that, Jen, can you address the actual map that was yeah, shown sure. here? 
So I use the one that um, from our website that was posted by Sue. So let me just see if, because I was thinking that when we were talking about Larry a lot. So let me see what was posted out in the foyer and then I'll put that up if it's, because I think it's different. I actually have that if I could be allowed to share my screen. Sure. Here we go. Um, it is right here. And if we look carefully, we got woods. woods, I got woods, I got woods. Here we go. Okay. So coming down here, it's um, not sharing. 168, I believe, is Berkshire Brewery, is that correct? And 135? 168 and 135 were what were included. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, so this is um, the map that actually was made for, for, for us from um, Percod. So Ryan Cleary did this, and this is the map that was posted out in the foyer and at the clerk's office. And so the one that Sue added to our website is obviously not correct because. Yeah, it says that these ones right here. It is correct. It's on Jen Remillard is seeing it on the website as the correct version. On the planning board. So of the planning board. It's on page. It's correct. It's the. It's the planning board. I can't hear you. Mr. Decker, your point with which map? Yes, we do. You're talking about the one that we showed tonight. Which shown to us tonight on here doesn't include Berkshire Brewery, does it? Yes. I believe it did because it seemed like it was outlining it and it was very. Yes, sir. She didn't think it did. It is, right? 168, 135, 168. Those two are outlined. You included in the one that was colored that I walked up to and pointed at. That's fine. I didn't have them go look at the detail <laughs> that close on that. But if, if the wrong map was presented at the public hearing, it's going to flaw at, when it comes time to getting it to the Attorney General's office. Okay. And before you're hearing, you, you, you're still deliberating whether you're going to present at the town meeting. But you close the public hearing, you can't go back into it. You're going to have to hold another hearing if it wasn't. We want to get it. What included on the map that was presented at the public hearing? Madam yeah. Chair. Yes, please, Lisa. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Uh, Madam yes. Chair, the, the official map is the one that is posted in accordance with what we say in the warrant and what you said in your advertisement. If your advertisement said it is the hearing map that is posted in town hall and includes these. Um, lists and also if your notice listed the lot IDs as they do in the warrant article, uh, the board is fine. That's correct, it was. Then you're fine to go forward because you listed very specifically in the warrant article which parcels to be included. Yes, you correct. Might, I would suggest you proceed. You. And details are important. So thank you, Mr. Decker. And I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, so, planning board, back to our deliberations. I move that we put this to special town meeting. Rachel has moved that the map move forward to the special town meeting and stay on the warrant. Yes. That's as such. Yes. We have a second. A second. Andrea is seconding the motion. Any other discussion? Can I just say one thing? Kathy, yeah. So we talk about the, and this is this language, but so that people aren't confused. We talk about the veterinary oh. clinic, which is right across from Yankee Candle, but then there's the veterinary emergency hospital, which is actually an up farther on the on the tourist overlay map. I think that that language should be clear because I have visited both of them and they're in very different places. <laughs> One's a little harder to find, but it, it, it does matter as it relates to location. It's a VESH, the, the, yes. the, the uh, hospital. Yeah. Hospital yes. versus veterinary clinic. Yes. Thank you. Good. All right. Any other discussion? Um, so uh, if we can then um, call the question, um, Kathy? Uh, Kathy Ochoa, aye. Andrea Leachman, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. 
Rachel Blaine, aye. Hey, Mary Cloutier, Mary? aye. And Annalie Wolfel, aye. So the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, and so now I will. I do think. Can I just say that people, this now moves to special town meeting. That is a place where, you know, there's yet another review of this bylaw approval. So that, that anybody who, there, there another, there another, there's another round. This is uh, not the it. Come to special town meeting. <laughs> Six o'clock, Monday, rain or shine, frontier, <clears throat> outside. field, outside. Bring your umbrellas. Time? Hopefully not. All right. So um, uh, moving on in the agenda to the public hearing regarding the frontage for municipal facilities on town-owned lots. Um, so let me read the um, official announcement for that, that we are holding our public hearing pursuant to General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 5, on September 30th, 2021, at 7 o'clock, on our potential amendment to the Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, Article 2, entitled Use and Dimensional Requirements, comma, Section 2300, entitled Dimensional Requirements, comma, Section 2320, entitled Table of Dimensional Requirements, by reducing the minimum frontage requirement for town-owned lots used for municipal facilities in the CVRD, C1, and I districts only. And again, full text of the proposed articles is viewed in the foyer and on our website. Um, and so I'm calling this public hearing open. And... Um, will again go back and forth. So if whoever wants to raise their hand first. Uh, nope, okay, it's my hand. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, to begin with, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Uh, the presenter, which is the select board, Carolyn, is going to um, make an initial presentation. Sorry, Carolyn. No, that's okay. Um, I wasn't sure if Dave wanted to do it because he was there now in person, but um, I'm glad to say that um, our, the reason why we're bringing this forward again in June is because we narrowed it down. Um, we listened to people's concerns and um, we have three projects in mind, um, specifically uh, the tourist out overlay district is part of the synergy of the three breweries. And we, as a select board, um, want to work for revitalizing downtown and bringing good energy and economic development to the downtown. So we're working on the Leary lot. The Leary lot comes in through the Greenfield Savings Bank, and then we're going to exit out onto Elm Street, hopefully, um, with a land swap. And we have 50 feet available to us. 50 feet is more than enough for one-way traffic out. And we feel we have want to use our ARPA funding to develop the parking lot and to enhance that act, uh, access to Berkshire Brew, but at the same time take out um, pressure for parking and um, on the neighborhood because it is partially residential there. So we want to take um, these cars off the street next to houses and stuff and put them in to a central parking lot that will benefit downtown the whole downtown. We also, at some point when um, availability comes on North Main Street, we would like to buy property so we could access um, the town owned brain burden lots to put in recreational fields. Lisa did the research. The only restriction was on one parcel for recreational use. We'd like to put um, both fields into recreational use. The other project we have in mind is um, the park project, as everyone knows, um, that to, we could do a subdivision road, but to overbuild the road, it would be more appropriate to have a smaller road going in there um, and leave the trees and the buffer and, and put the money, invest the money into the park. The whole point of this is to make sure that the downtown is connected, it's walkable, it's social, and um, we bring new energy downtown. Thank you, Carolyn. 
Um, before um, I call on anyone else, I'll just make note that we did begin our comments uh, on our meeting on the 13th and um, certainly have that recorded in our minutes. Thank you very much, Anne Mary. Um, so trying to be concise again, non-repetitive and two minutes. I would, if if that's quite all right, I would like Lisa just to um, have her explain that we're deleting the two sentences in the article that was printed in the warrant. They were intended not to be there. And so in the overlay district, we forgot to mention that. Um, I think we're on to no, a I different- didn't mention it for that. Yeah. yeah. We're not deleting anything in this article that's being discussed right now. Okay. All right. I, we forgot yeah. to mention that. Yeah, it was mentioned at town meeting. Ann Lee mentioned it. So the, the, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Okay. We're off to okay. we're off to a new article. We don't want to delete anything in this article. Okay. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. We had a successful oh. flu clinic from early this morning. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Good. Good. All right. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Oh, comments. Yes, sir. Yes, if you can identify yourself with your street address. I'm uh, Attorney John McLaughlin. I and represent uh, the student's background who lives on North Main Street. But are you in Deerfield? Excuse me? You, you don't live in Deerfield? No, I'm an attorney at law. Okay. Representing one of your citizens. Then I guess recognizing that that sort of enhances her time at the microphone. So please go forward for your two minutes. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say, I think we're here. I, I understand that the select board may have other ideas, but we're here because of North Main Street. The city, uh, the um, select board purchased it for 272000 only later realizing that they couldn't build on it uh, because it didn't have the frontage. And now their idea to fix that is to change the laws. I think that's a bad idea. For number one, this isn't just a technical problem, lack of frontage. In this particular instance on North Main Street, it's horrible. There, there are going to be hundreds of people, cars, vans, buses, coming in on 50-foot frontage. You would never, as a planning board, allow a corporation or a business to do such a thing. It's going to have a horrible effect on the neighbors. It doesn't matter to the neighbors whether it's the, the town or some big corporation doing it. It's not a good planning and zoning concept. I understand what they want to do, but they want to do it because they had an unfortunate situation that they're trying to fix, and this is not the way to fix it. It's really going to hurt the neighbors. It's also unfair to everybody else who has a property with just slightly less than frontage, and somehow the town can do what they want, and they can do what they want because your use regulations are so lax. We don't require special permits for most governmental uses. It's usually as of right or site plan review. And site, when they say site plan review will fix things, it won't. Because you can't say no on site plan review. You can tell people where to plant the opportunity and where to put That's certain right. things, but you can't say no. You can't say this is a terrible place, That's this is good. a terrible location, which you would normally do with anybody other than the town. This is just a very bad idea. Um, the other thing is they, they say we could do a subdivision road. Well, then they apply for a subdivision road. Don't change the bylaws. I mean, yes, it's costing you more money. Well, they should have thought of that before they purchased this property. It's not, you should make all the citizens suffer because they were not far sighted when they purchased it in, in July of last year. Um, don't change the laws because there was a slight mistake. Um, do the subdivision road. Um, the other thing is studies should be done. It was, it was, we talked about that at the last town meeting where this was voted down, but they've never done it. There's, and it's not just this property that's going to be affected. Anyone in those districts who lives near a uh, town property is going to be affected. We should know that before you vote on it. Lastly, this is the most Last important thing. My client is offering to buy this property for the same price, which is an outrageous price because it doesn't have frontage, that the town paid for. Understand that. She's not going to buy it so you don't lose money. I don't think you should go changing your zoning bylaws. Inappropriate and disrespectful. People vote on that. Thank you. The Thank you, sir. Want that, this is an easy way out. Thank you, sir. Inappropriate and disrespectful. Um, that was a point of order.
Miss what that? Um, there was concern that um, the tenor of your comments were disrespectful. We're trying to be very observant of our code of conduct. So thank you for the point of order. Other comments? Is there anyone on uh, Zoom now? I don't see uh, Yes, there is one. Pat? Where? Oh. You can identify know. yourself. Oh, no, that was just a thumbs up. That's a yes to oh, the I comment, not a hi, I'm here to talk. <laughs> Thank you. A yellow hand. Um, yes, Ms. Romillard? Hello, Jennifer Romillard, Conway Street. Um, I live not too far from here, and I'm very excited about the potential of having a new parking lot developed for the Leary, Leary Lots downtown because that will enable a lot more business to be brought to our community. This is not a vindictive project targeting out one particular project. There are over 300 acres of unused land that the municipal or municipality owns. Why are we not utilizing the property? This is not um, a time to use fear as a tactic to get people to vote because a particular cluster uh, doesn't want a particular project. Um, and it has been shared that there are other avenues to go around other than just voting this bylaw in. But we're looking at the broader picture. We're looking at senior housing, community center. We're looking at uh, a new senior center potentially on property owned by Deerfield that may not have that full 100 foot frontage. I myself, many of my neighbors on Conway Street and others, um, I believe the select board and John Petrick at the last meeting, a senior, presented a bunch of frontage on various streets within our community, all mostly located in the village here, that do not have 100 foot frontage. So you are enhancing the ability for people to build, to bring new business, to have more parking, not just a park. Um, I myself would love to have a huge community park instead of driving to Sutherland or to Look Park in Northampton. Um, and if you want to talk atrocity, go to Island Road in Northampton where I used to live. It was a one way in, one way out, and you couldn't fit two vehicles alongside, and there were hundreds and thousands of people who traveled there for boating and soccer on a regular basis. North Main Street has two streets. Thank you for your time, or two things. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. Decker? And even though you introduced yourself again at the beginning of this uh, hearing, Absolutely. We want to get it in our minds. Some people don't know who you are, Bob. We just forgot. We're so old. We forgot. Hey, it's hard to believe, but some people don't it know. does happen. Okay. So we're doing it for the Third. You're not Thank you. Whoa. 11 Kelleher Drive, South Deerfield. Thank you. Prior to that, I lived on Sugarloaf. <laughs> now, let's talk about the Larry Lot. The Larry Lot is a grandfathered lot. Okay? Very 40 years old house, which is next to the lumber yard, that lot there is a grandfather's lot. Both of those existed with houses on it at the time zoning went in. Okay, those are grandfather's lots. Mm -hmm. The lot on North Main Street, uh, north of Miss Rathbone's house, if I spell, pronounce her name right, that that lot was cut off. After, I think it was owned by Harding Industries at one point. There was a zone change. The people that owned it weren't happy. They sold their house off. I'm not sure when the when the lot was carved off with whatever the frontage was. Yeah. But prior to a change in the zoning about 20 years ago, uh, the people who owned that property could get a, a variance or a special permit because it was an exception written into the zoning bylaw, which I don't believe is there anymore. But I think if you ask the building inspector, he'll show it to you. Okay. And uh, I don't know of any others, but if anybody has 50 feet frontage and over 5,000 square feet, there's an exception in the state law 
that says you can build a one or two family house. And uh, so those 50 foot lots, you can actually build on, okay? You don't want to see them all built on, but you can actually build on. But you can ask your attorney or you can ask town council to comment on it, but in generally that's the way it is. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Other comments? Uh, next would be Zoom, if there is any one on Zoom. Oh, uh, Lily? Uh, yes. Tim, Tim has his hand raised on Zoom. Oops. All right, Tim, maybe after Lily's standing up already. Can you hear me if I'm wearing my mask? Sure. Okay. Just speak loud. Uh, Lily Dwight, South Snow River Road in South Deerfield. I am absolutely for this article. Um, senior housing is everybody knows is my bag. And the vision that we are building on is to vitalize the village center with small clusters of housing for older adults. So it's not large institutions. And I believe that this that we, this will be a great tool for us. As to the park, we own the park. It's not a question of if it will be developed. It's a question of how much is it gonna cost? Are we gonna spend hundreds of thousands of dollars more and wreak more environmental havoc and put in a road, or are we going to allow the frontage? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hilchey? Yes, Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. I'm just uh, giving a point of information. Um, I'm the chairman of the, the Community Preservation Committee, and I just wanted to clarify that the land was purchased with CPC money, and a stipulation of the purchase is that this land has got a permanent restriction that limits its use to outdoor space and recreation uses. So it's permanently conserved now that the town has purchased it. Thank you, Mr. Hilchey. <clears throat> um, Tim, you have your hand down now. Uh, other comments? Uh, Mr. Wolfram? Okay, I know a lot of the discussion has been about North Main Street, but what actually prompted the discussion with the Board of Selectmen was with Hampshire Lumber wanted to swap the land of Railroad Street with the Fortier property. Granted, it's just my pipe dream, but of how we could develop that, put enhanced parking there, and actually take part of the parking out of Elm Street in front of like Gianni Figs and stuff, and make that outdoor dining. That's, you know, I've seen what the city of Portsmouth, New Hampshire did from what they were to what they are. And it's, to me, it's a vision of what we can do with this the center of this town. And this is actually what started a lot of that discussion was that Hampshire Lumber wanting to swap. Thank you. <laughs> Other, yes. Beth, you can identify yourself again. Would it be all right if I sat down while I spoke? Sure, if you have the mic microphone like that. If you can identify yourself again. Thank you. I'm not feeling that loud. Well. Judith Pratt, phone 131 North Main Street. Um, my comments are as follows. I have never had any trouble parking downtown, and I go there often. Number two, the school may have a, the Frontier Regional High School may have a narrow entrance, but often the police are there directing traffic. Number three, at 131 North Main, just south of the uh, planning for the soccer fields, we are not downtown. We are not downtown at all. We don't need to revitalize us. We're not downtown. We're just residences. Trying to hold on to the quality and the character of our uh, parcel. My parcel is behind me, which is again south of the uh, North Main property that we've all been discussing for the soccer field is primarily wetland. Following the comments I've gathered over the past two and a half weeks from approximately 27 people that I have talked to in town, 
as a result of the postcard mailing and uh, phone calls and conversations that go into a door. People want to know, what, what's up with treehouse? Why can't they provide soccer fields? What are their frontage issues? Are we going to give them anything they want the way we give the town, whatever they want? Secondly, people thought uh, Dollar General and the DRG people really cared about wetlands and that that was the basis for denying the uh, development of the Dollar General lot. Suddenly, we've got wetlands again, but people are all for it. Don't understand why. Third, people are concerned that the water table is going to rise and properties are going to be flooded if this zoning is uh, passed and this project goes forward. Next, people want to understand the process. How could senior housing be taking decades, but soccer fields took three months to go from proposal to uh, our reality? How is that possible in terms of governance and philosophy of governance? People feel the zoning issue is being ran through but only just like Mr. Decker said, just to get the project done. People feel no true examination has been done of the impact. People feel that uh, uh, there's a lot of safety issues that need to be addressed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rathbone. Yes, Mr. Turk. Turk Sr., 50 Sugarloaf Street, South Fairfield. I want to reiterate a few points that I brought up in the Finance Committee meeting. People think that 50 feet is not enough for a road, not safe, totally untrue. Just think about Sugarloaf Street. Sugarloaf Street used to be a four lane highway at one time. Now you have two travel lanes, 12 foot each. That's only 24 feet. You have eight foot breakdown lanes on the side. You add up the two breakdown lanes and two travel lanes, that's 40 feet. You add on one side with a sidewalk, that's less than 50 feet. They get 65 feet. There's nothing unsafe about that property. People are saying, well, it can't be good, it's not safe. It hasn't been designed yet. The bottom line is there's plenty of room, and the bottom line is it can be built. The only question is whether it's going to be done with a 50-foot frontage or whether they push a road through there and they have to have a hammer thing where they have a turnaround at the end of the road. All that will do is take out parking places. And as we had one esteemed visitor from out of town say that, oh, you're, this is terrible for the town and this is not right and that's not right. Totally false, false information. They're telling you that you can't do anything with it and that you're going to hurt everybody. You're not going to hurt anybody. Let me give you an example. How many times have we had the town park used when we had it on Pleasant Street? We basically had one time per year, maybe twice per year, and that was it. We had a Cadillac raffle. You had a choice, $25,000 or a brand new Cadillac, whichever one you wanted. <laughs> At that time, Berkshire Group provided the beer, and they sold the beer mugs for five bucks, drinks all night for free. Now, are they going to have that again? I kind of doubt it because of current law. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. Compare that to the other side of the tracks. You have a business over there, and God bless them. I hope they do well over there. We, I like to see business succeed in the town of Deerfield. The business over there, they can have events up to 100 times per year. A hundred times per year. And do you think the music is going to stop at the railroad track? No, it's not. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's not going to stop. So I want to just point out that that is a perfectly safe lot that will be built. The question is, what are the terms and conditions that you're going to put on it? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any other comments? And then, if not, we'll have a conclusion from the select board. And um, I make a final comment. Yes. Sure, if you would like board. to have that be part of your conclusion too. Okay. Uh, the uh, as part of the discussions of the board of selectmen, 
uh, select board has. I have to get out of this habit. <laughs> Quick. I'm old. <laughs> Not as old as some here, but <laughs> but uh, just to point out, in order for any of these projects to move forward, review is required by several committees depending on the type of project. For instance, the project might have to go to the planning board, capital improvement planning committee, possibly the community preservation committee, and evaluation by the finance committee. However, the key factor is that any of these projects have to go before town meeting. So it's, yep. you know, we as the select board cannot just say we're going to do it and it gets done. There's a lot of checks and balances that are there that are well placed and for good reason. Thank you. Thank you. So, planning board, um, should we have a motion to close the public hearing? Move that we close the public hearing. Rachel, move that we close it. I second You can have it. I second it. Kathy Sylvester seconds it. Is there any other discussion? <clears throat> uh, Kathy Vitrova. Kathy Vitrova, aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Rachel Blaine, aye. And Mary Cloutier, aye. Cool, oh, aye. So it is the public hearing is closed. And so now we will have our deliberations. We need a comment from. Pardon me? We need a final comment from the select board. I think. Uh, Dave, no, was your, Dave. your final comment? Your comment was the final comment, um, I believe? Yes. yes Thank you. Thank you. So, um, planning board. Kathy. Kathy? Can I ask a question of the select board? Uh, sure. Yes, ask, ask any question of the select board. Uh, Madam uh, Chair. Yeah, Madam sorry. Chair. Yeah. Um, this is uh, town council. I just, um, I, I want to be sure that, that I believe I heard the board close the public hearing. Ah, uh, so we can't ask questions of the select board. I, th I think that would be inappropriate. I think you need to have a conversation amongst yourselves. Thank you. So we can ask us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, Lisa, very much. Then maybe one of you knows the answer to this question. Uh, one of the concerns brought up by the community at the last meeting was um, why this is important to bring forward now rather than wait for the annual town meeting. And because obviously the annual town meeting is more often attended by a larger number of the town. The last town meeting, there was over half that voted for this. It wasn't two thirds, so it didn't carry. Um, then amended, brought forward again. I think a little more clarification has happened, at least for me, as to why this project is important in the way it's being done, but I don't know why if there's a time period. Do you know? I, I don't think it's a time period so much as I think David said in, as he was in his closing statement, uh -huh. he can shake his head, but that <laughs> with the land swap, that is something that is on the board right now and can, it, be, moved, it, can be moved on now. That That's, that's what's precipitating the the nowness of this. What land, I'm sorry. The no. land swap with the lumber company okay. to open okay. up the back of Leary Lock. Right. Okay. So with this in hand, then that opportunity is available. Otherwise, and it may not be in the. Well, spring. I think it would be, but I mean, why not? I mean, if it's available now, bird in hand, move ahead. Um, the sooner we move ahead downtown, the more we understand what the opportunities are downtown. I mean, I think we see some fairly sturdy businesses, but we also see other businesses that, you know, I do think are finding some of the jigsaw nature of our downtown a little mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my understanding. Uh, and actually I feel fairly confident in that. <laughs> I can't even see David, so I don't know. <laughs> I know. But that, that, that's the real, that was the catalyst um, for them to push this now. Okay. Thank you. And the other possibility is another, um, for the Braeburn lot, we did talk about that before. If there were ever, ever anything that opened up there on, on mm -hmm. along uh, Sugarloaf, along mm -hmm. that portion of Sugarloaf, 
that there's nothing there that's imminent, so that's not really pressing it. But that's another right. reason to have it open now, mm -hmm. so that Braeburn, if, if the Braeburn property could open up, that would be another opportunity for the town to utilize under developed properties that the municipality owns. Mm -hmm. Thank but you. That, that's been, that's other, been trying um, well. Comments and questions and discussion, Kathy? Well, I think, you know, I don't, one person's freedom is another person's encroachment, right? So what we're trying to do is, is, is find some balance. I don't think we're using fear. I think we're trying to use inclusive feedback, commentary. Um, but I, I think it's fair to recognize a couple of things. One, a, a very similar motion did fail. The community did voice their opinion on how they felt about it. And I, I hold no position one way or another. I'm just making statement on that. And also, you know, it, it's fair to think about homeowners' properties and homeowners' values and, and, and abutters on Brayburn, on North Main, uh, in the center of town. I do, however, think that um, our businesses in town need as much support as we can give them. We have a huge tourist overlay, which I think is great, um, but that's not necessarily drawing it into town. So I think that the decisions that we make are, are clearly going to affect the community at large, but I think we have to look at how it's affecting the community. Is it affecting it? Um, how positively are we are we choosing our decisions to make here? And I, and I think in, in the vein of our businesses and the community and what we're going to offer them, that's at our forefront. Thank you, Andrea. I welcome. Um, the development of these of these properties, I think it makes the down it makes the downtown area and beyond downtown very walkable, bikeable, and I think that would really add a lot to the character of town. I too worked at the um, flu clinic today and was delighted to see people riding their bikes in. If we have places that people feel comfortable down, you know, in that central area of town. I think that would really benefit businesses, quality of life uh, for the general population. I can understand it might impact you um, homeowners, but I also walked that area just this week and there are wonderful, full uh, very mature trees that would block a lot of the, um, the view from the homes to, the, um, to this um, park area, and I think it would benefit a great many people in town to do this. Thank you. I'd like to address. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go oh, ahead. no, go ahead. I'd like um, to address yes, a concern that has been voiced by a few people um, about evening out the kind of fairness at peace uh, with respect to private homeowners in the Central Village and this 100 foot um, frontage requirement. And I do think it's something we want to put, tag as something we'll look at at another time. Uh, Bob gave us a great, Mr. Decker gave us a great um, uh, history lesson on this a, a few meetings back, and I think that was very helpful to us to think about, you know, how 100 feet actually came came into business, especially since 50 feet is actually a, another uh, standard that the state will, will uphold. So I think that looking at that and thinking about that. Um, is important, um, but I think it, it should give us com comfort to know that 50 feet is not, it's not a, a, a something that was just pulled out of our back pocket. Right. Um, and, um, and in fact, things that benefit the town benefit all of us, and that's a very important feature of this bylaw change. Thank you. Yes, Denise? Okay. Well, I've got a couple things. First of all, I, I think in response to what you said, Kathy, I think, you know, the last vote at the town meeting, you know, that seemed, and I, and I understand why that was voted down, because the way it was put forth, it was almost like a carte blanche. You know, you could do anything with the municipal, and frankly, I, I guess I probably don't blame people for voting that down. But this is, this is much more, um, it's a much small, smaller area, there's a plan, it's very concise, it's not this nebulous idea. So I think, you know, that I think has been really, um, I, th I think it's a much better plan. Um, let's see. The, uh, 
the area with the park that was also industrial. So, I mean, that could have been, it could have been another pelican back there. I mean, I'm not sure <laughs> exactly how, how large, but that could, and, uh, you know, it's my understanding that pelican is a little loud. So, you know, and then listening to Mr. Mr. Pachorik about um, before, I guess, the old park, was that before the elementary school? Okay. And, you know, that was fine. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think we just moved into town then, so I don't know whether there was a big issue with, with noise. But, you know, and another thing that you said that I thought was a real good visual is looking at Sugarloaf Street, which is absolutely fine, plenty big. I bike down that all the time. I feel safe. And that's wide. I mean, that's it's wide enough. So I don't see for sure that 50 feet is a real is is a problem. And I think, yep, that's all I had to say. <laughs> one more comment in. Yes, Kathy. Um, I think it's important, and and this to me it might be the most critical piece. Um, Kathy, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. However, that the the land was purchased with the PC money and and it has a limited use and that use is outdoor use. I mean we. You mean for that one parcel? Yes. So. In particular, that that's coming into play quite a bit and and um, I think that that becomes maybe one of the most critical pieces here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you, <laughs> Andrea. Um, I am a new member of the Open Space and Recreation Committee. And we met this week and um, are about to uh, field the survey that has to happen every seven years. And many, many, many of the questions are about where you can recreate in town. And the idea that we might let go a place that, you know, would be, I think, would be um, against what the open space um, committee would, would favor. That is my opinion. That is not necessarily what they would say directly, but. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, I've got one more. Yeah. Just one more point. I know when we were meeting with Treehouse and going up and doing a site plan, um, we I think there were lots of concerns about noise, and there's a decibel limit, and they have addressed that. And so I, it's my understanding that that would be the same with this, that the, the decibel limit would have to be at a certain level, and that the... Um, if there is a band shell, that that would be faced to the railroad. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. If it is, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. The, okay. It's, it's I we can't have have it. It. That's <laughs> I know that's put, that's pushing ahead. Thank but. you. <laughs> that's asking questions. If it, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, I'll so. just add a point of clarification as we talk about the motion that failed in June. It required a two-thirds majority. My understanding is that it received approximately 61%. So um, hmm. it was not overwhelmingly defeated. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I would actually say, um, in addition to some of the comments that are in favor of this, is that um, I think a subdivision road really doesn't make sense for this park. It actually is bigger. It would require more impermeable surface, uh, it would take away more utilization of the park by residents who are not able to walk or, or bike and um, trees. And, is, and is significantly more expensive, as I understand. So it might remove tr more trees. Ooh. Might. All right. All right. <clears throat> Other? Yes, Kathy. I, I know that there's concerns about safety. Traffic studies would still need to be done, I believe, under site plan review for any mm -hmm. plan for that area that you're speaking of, Ms. Rathbone. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that, that you wouldn't be able to purchase it anyway. Is that right? Is my understanding mm -hmm. is that, that that couldn't happen because it was in a conserver? I don't know that. I, I don't know. I think I, it I, may be yeah. quite I don't know. challenging to happen. So as Rachel was saying earlier, this is, this is what's in front of us now, not yeah. what might be so, in the future. I mean, I think those are moot points. If that's, <clears throat> that's, my, that's just what I wanted Thank to you. say. So, anyway. um, uh, and Mary, I haven't looked at my screen. I don't know if you have anything to add. 
Um, I don't have anything to add at the time. I, you know, <clears throat> no, I Thank agree you. with what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so if um, that's the case, is the planning board comfortable to close our deliberations and make a motion to, on this? All right. So let us have a motion on, um, I guess, whether or not to move the municipal frontage article as posted to the town meeting. I Madam Chair, excuse me, yes. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, yes. Oh, different motion. <laughs> Madam yes, Chair. Lisa. I just want to be clear, um, the board is going to need to, um, in their motion to move it forward, they would need to recommend or not recommend it. It's a little bit different because it's a similar motion than before, or excuse me, a similar or warrant article. So you would need to uh, make a motion that would include moving it forward and recommending it or not recommending it. So it would, you would need to add both of those to your motion. Is that are they two separate motions or can we just is it one? You can, can we make, move it forward with a recommendation to the yeah. town warrant. Yes. So a recommendation. So uh, right. A, a recommendation. If the recommendation is positive, then it would be to adopt. Yes. So I I move that we move this forward to town meeting with our recommendation from the planning. With our, po positive, with our positive, positive recommendation. recommendation. Yeah, recommendation. I second that. And seconded by Denise. Is there any Discussion. For the discussion. I'm sorry. Who moved that? I did. Rachel Blaine. Denise seconded. Thank you. Uh, Kathy. Kathy Wichoba, aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Stolkester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Rachel Blaine, yes. Amory Cloutier, aye. Annalie Wolfpool, aye. So the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, and thank you to everyone for your diligence with this two weeks ago as well as tonight. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. Bye-bye, thank you. Yes. Um, we now have another public hearing, my goodness. Um, <clears throat> this is a, well, I will just read the public hearing statement here on the 71 Main Street, North Street, 71 North Street, North Main Street. <laughs> Notice is given, and here we are holding our public hearing on September 30th, 2021, on the application from the Town of Deerfield for site plan review of property located at 71 North Main Street to utilize the existing building as a new location for the South County Senior Center. And the um, actual warrant article is available on um, on the website and certainly in town foyer. Um, so if um, we could have a member of the select board introduce this and then after that uh, potentially have having some discussion with our building commissioner, uh, Mr. Wolfram. Okay, uh, Dave Wolfram. Yeah. Member of the select yeah. board here at Deerfield. Um, the reason we're coming for in front of you tonight is, uh, well, most of you know that we have issues at the senior center currently. Uh, we're looking at staff gap situations, how we can alleviate this and actually get people out from underneath the tent. So uh, one of the thought processes was trying to move people to the church. The church, um, the, the, the congregational church. church, congregational church. And when we were doing that, we found out because the property had not been used for a while, it actually technically had to be designated change of use, which required the site plan review. So, um, you know, currently, uh, we are talking with the. Uh, uh, church, holy name, and maybe using their uh, pavilion for a short time. 
but uh, that is not a long-term solution for right now, uh, something they're agreeing to let us use. And what we're thinking about trying to do is in gradually work and get the building, the congregational church up to the code so that we can move the uh, seniors into there as a semi-permanent home until we can build a permanent home for them. Uh, we're planning on looking at, well, we have feasibility studies and things going on right now um, and trying to figure out exactly what's best for the town. And, but, you know, we can't wait much longer. Um, the unfortunate part about it is I put the cart before the horse and, you know, uh, we haven't gone through the, to the finance committee and the other capital improvement committees uh, as we should have done. So what we're going to be looking at is just going to town meeting, getting funds to start doing things on it uh, with local contractors if we can, uh, with funds that we'd provide to put in the, basically the two big things is the handicap accessible ramp mm -hmm. and the uh, handicap bathroom. So. Um, but, uh, handicap. So with our, although with our site plan review application, we are concerned with external changes to the building. So the bathroom is not Sorry, something I've part of our- allergic reaction to somebody's perfume or something in the building, so. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Wolfram. Um, mm, to the back signage. So let's see if we're following our, our um, process here. That's the overview from the select board, who is which is proposing this site plan. Um, do we have any um, public comments about this um, hearing? And then we'll have our uh, closing statements and and deliberations. So, um, public comments about the proposal that is before us now. Yes. <clears throat> Hi, Judge Medellar, it's on my street. Um, I'm in support of this. I think it's really important that we find a temporary stopgap location for our seniors. Um, while all these other projects are underway and thought processes are going into, you know, creating a community or, you know, the clusters and everything else that would incorporate, hopefully, a new senior center um, or remediating the entire building that it's currently in, um, that's going to take time. And there are three communities that are served by, um, you know, our senior, by the senior center, the South County Senior Center. So I think it's really important to, um, you know, to support this because you're getting them somewhere during the winter. Obviously, we hope COVID doesn't do an uptick, so you know, hopefully, be able to have more in-person gatherings. But I think it's a great uh, temporary measure. Um, and then, you know, deciding or determining what happens with that building later on, the church. You know, maybe those um, improvements will still benefit the community in the long run. So uh, I strongly support, and I hope that the planning board will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. Johnson. Uh, Skip Homestead, uh, 45 Stillwater Road, South Fairfield. I just had two quick questions. We are talking about because we're, talk, we're talking about the property that is the church or was the church. Correct. How many dollars are we talking about? Are we? Are we will we need to vote that on uh, on town meeting? Yes. So um, so we only have uh, a few days. About ninety six hours to go. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, I think we need. I think we need to get some dollars someplace. Well, we're. No, we, if, if, if everything was the way it was spelled out by people that we have evaluated, it's somewhere between one hundred twenty and one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Wow. My, as I've thought this through, because I was wondering the same thing, what I'm considering right now is, with any site plan review request, um, we are not necessarily looking at the dollars that the applicant is looking at spending, we're looking at the considerations of the site plan review. We are actually going to have... So I believe that's a very valid question, but it's probably not 
part of our site plan yeah. review. Uh -huh. my, my concern was more, we've got, there's an article here, and it says in the article, see if the town will vote to transfer from available funds or otherwise provide money. It doesn't say how much. And I want, can we put that in now? Isn't it a little late? This is, this is the uh, uh, warrant. Right. Not mm. in the warrant, anyway. Maybe if yeah. Lisa Mead is still on. I, I she, yeah. she isn't. Okay. She's not. I mean, again. She's not on, and Carolyn's hands raised as well. And if, okay. if they could swing the camera, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, Carolyn. Um, thank you. I just we're here to for the planning board to um, ask for the change of use request a change of use, which triggers the site plan. Same footprint, but we're asking for the waiver of the technical your technical requirements. We're we're it's temporary use, and you know we're not trying to invest very much in the church. We have to secure what needs to be done to the church. If anyone looks at the church right now, there's a big hole in the steeple where a fascia board came off. The board needs to be put back in. So, you know, there's no damage to the clock, you know, things like that. So we, we are doing minimal to the building, but it's internal. And it's really the waiver of tech, your technical requirements is what we're here for. And, um, and the reason I think we're not waiting on the dollar amount is because the dollar amount is not solid yet. And I hope to having a solid number by Monday. And the Capital Improvement Committee, as far as I know, is going to meet on Monday. And you know, we'll make a recommendation from that meeting. Yes, again, I, I believe that we're addressing the site plan review application. Uh -huh. um, and even if we approve the site plan review application, it doesn't necessarily mean that the town will approve the dollar, any dollar allocation, right. that those are two separate issues, although it's certainly in our minds, they're very closely aligned. The other piece, and maybe since we are having public comments right now, this would be a time for Bob to um, come in because um, as you talk about the fascia and the clock and whatnot, there are only five things that are listed on our site plan review application. They have to do with the ramp, the signs, mm -hmm. a motion detector, detector light, mm -hmm. paving of a walkway, and relocating the accessible parking spaces. So those are the only things that we're addressing from the standpoint of the site plan review. And I'd have to think for a moment about the clock. <laughs> but Bob, can you address um, the uh, applicability of any of our current zoning bylaws as relates to those five things that are on the application? Yeah, I'm Bob Walden, the building commissioner for Deerfield. Well, it's a change of use in the sense that it was a religious use and now it'll be a municipal use. So that triggers the site plan. But there really isn't any site improvements other than the ramp, it's the same parking lot. I mean, the sign will move. It, um, I guess that's why the select board is there asking you to waive the technical compliance. Um, but the clock, I, that, that's irrelevant to the building. Um, most of the improvements would be to the interior, accessibility, accessible bathroom, emergency lights. Um, just basic things. If I can ask Bob, and maybe I didn't review my um, the application as carefully as I thought I did, but I don't see anything about asking a waiver of technical requirements. The only thing I see is in number 15, the um, the specifics about the parking spaces and the mm -hmm. and the ramp. So could you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. Well, you have the authority to waive the technical compliances, such yeah. as, you know, plans, traffic studies, all those type of things, oh, yeah. which are relevant when we're using, I, I think, I mean, it's up to you as the board, but it's the same traffic pattern, the same parking lot. It's really just a formality of sending you, because it's sending it to you because it's a change of use. Is that actually on the application though? Because I didn't see that. 
it's um i think jennifer just, yeah jennifer's hands up kind of um jen wants to comment on that thank you jen hi thank you um so basically when you make an application and it's missing some items it's sort of given that that you're asking for those waivers from the planning board for the site plan review so they're asking because um to come up with an engineered plan and other plans would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and a handicap ramp is you know the, the, it's a given like they're they're allowed to do that because you need to have the accessibility right. and um and so then we said that we were going to use existing signs and then they marked on the plan that we gave where the existing sign will then be moved from the current senior center over to the former congregational church. And so basically we're just saying all of the technical requirements that were typically asked for by any other applicants are being waived at this time because of the urgency of the use, the temporary use of the church. But tonight, right now, this very moment is the first that I believe that I've heard of that, unless I overlooked it someplace. Rachel, well, you're saying? You about, well, it, uh, so it's in the bylaw. It's, yeah. it's in the bylaw that you can, you can, if you don't yeah. give it, you can. Compliance. The planning board may, upon written re request of the applicant, waive any of the technical requirements of Section 5430 or 5440, where the project involved relatively simple development right. plans. That's. So that's where we kind of live. Yeah, that's great. I just, it's just that I didn't know that. It's not, it's not like part yeah. of any app. I didn't know that until right this minute. So yeah. Yeah. unless I, oh, unless I missed something. No. Yeah, I think we, we, we spoke about that. Remember when we had our conversation, Annalie, and we were talking about yeah, That's fine. It's all well and good. We should have a letter. It probably should be with, I mean, I think it speaks to what, you know, but Dave has indicated, as well as Skip is pointing out, that this is kind of a 11th hour event. Um, right. So it, it should come with a, the, the application should come with a, a notification, written request from the applicant, which is select board, um, asking for the waiver. So I think for, for Manley, okay. is feeling a little side it's just that she doesn't, there's, it's not, doesn't seem to be a, attached or included right. in right. the application. We're sorry, uh -huh. Anna Lee. I, I just assumed that um, <laughs> it had been put in the notes or something. I'm sorry about that. All right. All right. All right. Okay. But that's why it's not clear to us. So maybe yeah. if we could just then address um, that. Bob, it sounds like from what you're saying with the the ramp, the ramp as they are proposing it is in conformance with our current zoning regulations. There's nothing special about the ramp. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, yeah. and relocating the map, the signs. The signs are in conformance with our current sign bylaws. There's no non-conforming, previous non-conforming problems with the signs. Correct, They're, they fit the okay. correct size, yeah. Excellent, good. Uh, the motion detector lamp is uh, in conformance a, with that, our lighting regulation. Yes, I mean, that's more of a building code, but yes, yeah. I see, yeah, because it, Points down. That's interesting, isn't this? Paving the walkway and relocating the accessible parking spaces. Actually, after looking a little closer, the, the accessible parking spaces are already there on the building, marked in that and those exact locations. So those are already existing. Um, so we don't have to. Kurt, so you don't have to do that. Yes. We don't have to relocate accessible parking spaces. Correct. There's two two accessible parking space signs currently on the church in the exact same location drawn on that drawing. And the walkway would be very minimal because the ramp will be approximately 45 feet long and it'll almost reach the existing parking lot because of the, so the slope, slope and pitch of building the ramp correctly. It'll be very long. And it'll almost reach the parking lot. So the amount of paving might be 10 feet, I mean, very minimal, you know, like three feet wide, 10 no, feet. Are there no special zoning uh, requirements, yes, that we need to study with that? No. I no. Lost you. There you are, good. Yeah. So it sounds like then the, there are only three things that we're looking at uh, for this site plan review. It's the ramp, 
the signs and the walkway because otherwise the parking spaces and the lamp are covered in other ways. And then in addition, there's the question of the waiver. Is that correct? Yeah. Is, yes. is that correct? Okay. No. Yes. So my question is, 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 is the only entrance, the rear entrance through that walkway? No, okay. No. And the, bu Carolyn, the, building, the building will be brought up to building code. So I, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll make sure of that. <laughs> I was like wondering what the emergency exit was because they talk about an other access and egress and division. So I just it was curious. a search. I mean, they right. had to have yeah, that. yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be two two means of egress with doors and lights, and it'll be completely the building code. Okay. Um, so there's also then a question of waiver of the other technical requirements, but Anne Mary, you'd had your hand listed before, so could you please speak? My question is, um, is it listed in building code as handicap accessible or ADA compliant? And I'm what, I would prefer ADA compliant. We're describing the buildings, not the people. Yeah, I'd like to just call it accessible and not use the word handicap myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so it'd be an accessible ramp, an accessible entrance, and an accessible bathroom, which doesn't concern the planning board. But okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, Emma. So, if there is a request to waive the technical requirements, I kind of don't know exactly what technical requirements I'm asking to mm -hmm. uh, waive. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Bob, Bob could list them, but I, uh, the main thing was, you know, um, engineering of parking, because we're using the existing parking that already um, is shared actually with the current senior center and is mostly the church parking to begin with. And so that's not really changing. And, you know, usually we have to do engineering and traffic studies and stuff if you're going to do a full um, site plan review. But this, you know, this is pre existing and it was, yeah. yeah. So we're just trying to, to do this rapidly as we can. We have so some comments from, uh -huh. as well. So let's not forget. Thank you. Yes. Were there, are there other comments yes. here? Oh, yes. Ma'am, you've been waiting all this time. <laughs> If you could identify your, yourself with your name and your address. I'm Melissa Perot, 74 North Main Street. And we would like to find that and to hear the bell go. But um, I have a question, and that is, does this, this temporary use need it be restricted to seniors? or could it be used for the community various ways? I think the town, I mean, my, my hope would be that we would have a community center that would be at the heart of the village, and that this building, this historic building for you, um, would be the ideal place to bring the community back to where it started, which was with the church. And I hope you'll be open to the idea that while this is a temporary use for, the, for senior services, I would hope that it, we could start thinking more in terms of the whole community, that teens and young children and ballet dancing lessons, <laughs> you know, whatever <laughs> could go on. Nice. And, and it is oh, I've been inside. I'd love to. I'd, um, I just want to open up that thought Thank you. that I don't know that seniors need a special case or to be designated as special. We're not just, we're not different, we're just people. <laughs> and you know what, we benefit most when we're with younger people because most of us yeah. like that and <laughs> we all know that. So why do we get put together with other seniors? <laughs> I think you're going to be recruited by yeah, really yeah. behind you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I think, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, wait. No. Yeah. Thank you. That was eloquent and lovely, and I hope you will speak um, at other uh, more 
well attended no. meeting. We're unfortunately just not looking in this community. We find it very secure, friendly, helpful. Um, it has everything we need within walking distance, and that's why we came. And we're living on the ground floor of the Blue House, and with, so that's the senior house. <laughs> <laughs> and we have with us an Afghan family upstairs. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I, again, I think as those ideas can come forward in other forms, at this point we're just addressing the um, external um, features. Um, as a, a point of interest, um, I know we have two hands up there, but the uh, the reason we're coming for the site plan review is because one, I didn't think we were going to have to do it <laughs> because it's a municipal property that we're using for municipal use. It wasn't until one of our seniors in the town that I have very high respect to that usually holds my feet to the fire on everything I do, noted that we needed the site plan review because it is a change of use. So that's why it was right. somewhat delayed. Right. And just as another point of interest, anything that the town of Deerfield does, it's not for just one group of people, it's for the whole community. Yes, good. And I want to save every old building, other than the one we're in, because I don't okay. I watched this one being built when I was in the third grade, but it's, uh, <laughs> other than that. <laughs> Mr. Zucker? <laughs> yes, Mr. Do you Zucker, want to take that? Tim Hilchey has had his hand up for a while on. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't notice uh, yeah, him, but I got Mr. Decker first, and then Tim will grab you. you He's been on for a while. And he's actually no, holding Tim, up his hand, whereas Tim just Tim has Hilton a little first. thing on. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, 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 okay. no, no. You had your hand no. up. Well, oh, Tim, well, oh, I thought we were going back and forth. No. <laughs> yes, Mr. Mr. No, Decker. let Bob yeah. talk. Let Bob talk. Decker. Okay. Okay. You want Get me to use my name again, too? Yes, yeah, sure. Robert first. James Decker the third, 11 Kelleher Drive, South here from <laughs> And unlike David, I didn't watch this building being built. It was just <laughs> land at that time. You built it. I was in other buildings. Okay? I was too. Anyway, uh, prior to this building being built, all the school plays, et cetera, were done at the congregational church in the room with the stage. Mm -hmm. And they would have the kids come over to do that. Uh, and after this building was built, what ended up happening is we didn't have enough room to run the kindergarten one year, okay? And we were forced to ask the church if we could put kindergarten there so the kids could breathe better, okay? And, and what have you, before the new school was built. Uh, that was another municipal use, but it's got a long-standing municipal use. The town clock has been in well before I was born, or anybody else in this room, okay? The clock has been there forever, and the town pays to maintain it, et cetera, continually. I think it's a great idea uh, to fix the toilets, put a ramp in, and do those things, and make the building work, and let it breathe. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll um, ask something, and then we'll see if we have any other comments um, okay. in a minute from Carolyn, but it appears that, am I correct in saying that the technical requirements that you are asking a waiver of is section 5431 of our site plan review, um, of our site plan review requirements. So Carolyn, if you want to speak and then somebody else can answer, if that's in fact what you're asking for. I, I yes, believe Carolyn? so. Um, I'm just going to have Bob, he, I saw him pull out the book. So I just need him to check. That's the one where it has the parking and the traffic study and all correct. that. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. It'd be, correct. It'd be Anna section 5431. That is correct, Anna Lee. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. Whew. Any other? Tim, 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 Tim. Sorry. Mr. Hilchey. All right. Um, Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. Um, I, excuse me for my ignorance on this point, but I was just wondering if you grant the change of use, um, would repairing roof shingles or fixing an exterior clabber be in your purview to review with the change of use, or is that something that just gets done as a matter of course? And, and I'm just curious. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Carolyn or Bob? I, I just wanted to make sure people were aware of what we were trying, what we have to do to do repairs like to the steeple, for, just so secure it is different than what was we're requesting Bob was or the kind of planning board stuff that would come before the site plan. I just wanted to make sure that there was some, you know, if we start working on the outside of the building, it's only to repair like the, you know, the um, up on the steeple and some of the, you know, shingles and stuff. We really were not altering the, the footprint other than adding, you know, the ramp. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to be yeah, very. I think, I think we're ready to finish yeah. the vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. To be honest yeah. with you, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we. I I, okay. thought I would move yeah. that we bring it to a vote. Because then we can have deliberation. All right. Uh, yeah. So Rachel is moving that we. What are you moving? I'm moving that we bring this to that we. Oh, that we close, close the public hearing. Yeah. I'm second that. And and Denise is seconding that we close the public hearing. Any um, conversation or deliberation? No. All righty, let's start with Kathy Wetroba again. Uh, Kathy Wetroba, aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Colchester, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Rachel Blaine, aye. And Mary Cloutier, aye. Emily Wolf Cole, aye. So thank you. Moved unanimously. Um, so do we have a motion in regards to accepting the basically modified site plan review application? that addresses the ramp, the signs, the walkway, and a request for a waiver of section 5431. And I think a written, if we if we could get that, mm -hmm. that would be good just to cover our yeah. end. It, 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 it says in the, if we could get a written request for that, that would be great. Yes, mm -hmm. I, we'll have, um, we can have um, um, Casey submit it to yep. Emily oh, tomorrow. Terrific, just to have it attached to the, the yeah. application, I think that would be helpful. Um, yes, I apologize, it wasn't there. It's a town-owned yeah. building. We're switching it from a church, which is not going to be, to a municipal building, which it, it really is already, essentially, because it is a town-owned building. Um, now we can maybe use it. I'm kind of surprised that it's taken us this long, sure. to be honest. I've been through it a couple of times on other reasons. I think there are going to be times when we want to have meetings there, mm -hmm. even. Um, I, um, so anyway, so I'm in. I'm in yeah. favor of. And but Rachel's along. moved. Do we have a second for this motion? Yeah, I'll second it. Kathy I'll Sylvester has seconded. Um, so right, and with deliberations, Rachel is in favor of for those reasons. Are there other comments on the planning board? Who seconded it? I'm sorry. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester. Thank you. Any comments? Any other comments? All right. Um, shall we then um, have a vote? So, Kathy Wetroba? Kathy Wetroba, yes. Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Denise Mason, yes. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Emily Wolfco, yes. So the motion passes. All right. Seven minutes after our, when we turn into pumpkin. Um, 9.30, I'm done. I can't in. All right. Um, we do, I, we did not have, to my knowledge, any other um, business not reasonably anticipated. Uh, any other public comments? I, I move that we... Oop, we're not done yet. <laughs> Sweetie pie. Um, reports. Andrea Leibson has been re, um, appointed. Thank you. Congratulations yeah, uh, to the Open Space Committee. And um, you did make one comment about uh, your first Open Space Meeting. Are there any other highlights that you need to? Well, just to let uh, the community know that uh, um, the Open Space and Recreation um, Survey will be coming out in the next few uh, months and encourage everyone to complete it. The town needs that in place. It has to be approved by the state. And when it is approved, it's good for seven years, and it will allow us to apply for grants from the state. Without it, we can't apply. When is that going to come out? Is it when will it come out? Yeah. Probably at, uh, late October. Okay. Okay, great. And it will probably be um, online. It will be a an online survey with 
paper surveys available for folks who prefer to use, do things on paper. Thank you. Thank you, and again, congratulations, yeah, and thank you for you. serving. Thank you. Um, um, our next meeting, uh, certainly our next meeting is, uh, everyone's next meeting is October 4, 6 p.m., our special town meeting at Frontier, mm -hmm. and then the planning board um, will be meeting remotely on November 1st with um, a special appearance by members from FERCOG. Um, so we can adjourn the planning board, the select board, and the finance committee. So let's start with the select board. Uh, the select board's not adjourning. <laughs> oh, they're going on. I think we're the, oh, only, you're not we're adjourning. the only ones that are adjourning. Oh, okay. And I would and, move that. And, and finance committee's not there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all, those, all, all those in favor? I mean, we can do it. Aye. 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 I second. <laughs> Thank you. Wait a second. I have to use their office. Okay. Do we have a motion for the finance committee to adjourn? Yes, please. No, they're not adjourning. Oh, you guys are you guys are you're voting, aren't you? Julie, you there? Yes. Oh. Yes, I am. All we really have to do is prove the minutes from last Uh, yeah. I don't know why I brought them. Rachel, uh, they were Thank you, Planning Board. You've been really sweet and very helpful. Planning Board, they're trying to convene the Finance Committee, so just let them close out and then the Select Board can close out. Oh, wait, Select Board's not. Casey's going, don't. <laughs> All right, so I think we have a motion and a second to adjourn the Finance Committee. Um, can you all do a roll call vote, please? Huh? Can hear you, Dave. You can hear me through this? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Jeff and I. Julie and I. Julie Chalf and I. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, I lost my agenda somewhere in the, the handoffs, but um, we've got we've, we've got the uh, approximate cost for renovation of the church. Yeah. So we. So we've got to kind of establish a dollar amount that we want to move forward with. Um, I I feel like uh, how much of that is like to do the, um, you know, to, to stabilize the steeple, you know, get the boards back up on the steeple for winter. Well, the, that would be under just town maintenance. That isn't part of this project. Okay. All right. Because I, I, I want to make Anything sure. We... To, any repairs of the town, the town's oh. buildings should be under municipal repair, and not through. Okay. Uh, okay. The... I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't see the total. I, I thought the total was around 115 or 120 thousand, something like that. Yes. Okay. And what I'm thinking is with contingencies and everything else that. I had so in answer to Skip's earlier question, I had put one hundred fifty thousand dollars in because that's one hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what I had heard you mention. Yes. So I had reached out to Jack Davy to try to get capital together, and it turns out I forgot to hit send on an email. So I will apologize. Um, I, I think we could still we could still um, have a consensus. And I sent the motions out in email, but then I stopped because I needed them to make a recommendation to approve this. 
Casey, I think we could call Lisa tomorrow. And I think there's a way we could do a consensus. Thanks, it won't be official meeting, um, but we could do a consensus. Each person's opinion. Yeah, I will ask. On what? Um, capital. Oh, Since yeah. I wasn't able. Yeah. By the time I realized the office was closed, so we couldn't post. Can you hear me, Carolyn? Yes. Yep. Okay. It's loud and clear. <laughs> I can barely hear me. <laughs> so um, I guess my question is, on the amount, what would you like me to, what would you officially want to see in the warrant? Um, 120 or 150? I'm, I'm, I would like if, to see 150. I'm I'm agreeable to the 150, and what I'd like to do is is um, make it clear that we're trying to sort out, you know, what's the best decision. I mean, we still, as at least in my mind, we have the select board hasn't had enough time to decide: do we invest the 150 or 120, whatever it is, into the church, or um, you know? the 30 or forty thousand dollars to rehab the current senior center you know for the um you know and and do some gutter work and stuff like that i uh, i and here again it's part of it is just establishing a fund that we can draw on for right i i i would kind of like to say it's to um put the 150 aside and say it is to to, to be determined for the senior center because it could be either one i, I mean i don't I, think it's written that way though i don't think we can do it that way but right. i will ask you well i'll ask I, I just i just we we have we as a select board just haven't had enough discussion as to which track are we supposed to do i am so appreciative of dave spearheading this project and i'm 100 percent supportive of us moving ahead and that's why I'm as rushed as this is, whatever, we need to have wow. the flexibility to move ahead once we make a decision. But I, I would really like us on October 6th to um, have an in-depth discussion about, you know, either the new, the old, uh, current senior center or the church moving forward. But we do need repairs on this, you know, that hole in the steel needs to be fixed. And yeah. that's just the the board just got blown off, so it needs to be tacked on again, you know, nailed on. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know, there's a lot of discussions that, are, that have to go on here, and you know, obviously, you know, the way I'm looking at it, with us having the ability to use the John Paul Center for a short time, that, that makes means sense. it gives us a little more time to space out this project and get it done. Um, just one piece at a time where we don't run into a major issue with procurement? Well, that's a different question. I know. But the way the article's written, it does specify the, the space. So that's my concern. Um, but I wanted the board, because we didn't get the estimate in time for last week's meeting, we weren't really able to talk about it. But yeah. here again, I if, if it's a matter of putting gutters on the existing building, that's building maintenance in my my opinion. Might be wrong. I mean, putting gutters on or, or, or replacing yeah. the feature board, that, I mean, come on, that, that has to be maintenance. That can't yeah. be, and, and but, we should, Yeah, I would say that too, but. You know, we should be able to move forward with that kind of thing. I agree with Dave on that, but I'm 100% I'm, I'm supportive of moving forward with the church just because we haven't had the discussion, do we do the church or the current senior center yet? And I want us to have that um, flexibility to make the correct decision. That's all. Right. Okay. I'm. 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 Dave. I'm just thrilled to death that you are really trying to put some thought into this, and I just want us to have a, a good conversation because there. From I mean, well, Tom. That, Tom was at the. Tom was at the clinic. Yeah, well, Tom, Tom was at the Tom Feinkevich was at the um, clinic today. And he, um, you know, was talking about 30 or $40,000 to remediate the um, right. current the senior center. Yeah. yeah. And he thought it really wouldn't be that big a deal. 
but I was worried that it wouldn't be enough. And I, I want us to have a, a, enough of a solution to be at least, you know, tie us over until we do the, a real community center for right. the students. Yeah, so, I agree. You know, if it's, if it's gonna keep reoccurring in the, in the current senior center, you know, obviously the asbestos, you get rid of it, you get rid of it, but I'm worried about the mold. And if it can be fixed with the gutters and stuff like that, that's a pretty good fix. And then, then it would be worth staying in that senior center. But, you know, we had already talked oh, about switching buildings and stuff like that. And so if, if we're gonna do the church, let's get enough money to do the church. So people have a place, good space, place for at least, you know, three or four or five years, whatever it takes. Yeah, I'm, I'm estimating about, it's gonna take probably at least three years. Jack Davies has his hand up, please. Hi, Jack. You can yell at me tomorrow. Feel free. Go ahead, Jack. Jack's got his hand up. Jack's not he here. Does. No, I think he's got to unmute. Oh. oh. No. He's unmuted. Oh, he is unmuted? He was. Oh, he was. He's muted now. Maybe he's asleep. No. no. He's probably having the same problem with his computer I had. It's a day for computer problem. We can't hear you, Jack. I even came to work early so I could do it right. And I didn't. There's just too much stuff going on, Casey. Please don't worry about it. We'll we'll figure out a way to get it fixed. Oh, it looks like his computer's trying to think or whatever. I was I just yeah. asked him to put on his video but oh I don't know. well dave whatever you think um we should be doing to just so we have some flexibility to have a good discussion and then i'm supportive of us having whatever moving forward yeah uh I, just you know i know uh, from i haven't talked to the casey since her meeting with father john but the uh you know that's just a temporary situation they're not going to want people there for that extended period of time so right you know, um and you know we really got to sit down and seriously look at what we're going to do with those these buildings so but i i just that was the whole point of having that you know giant committee the connecting yep. communities yep. incentive in, initiative yep. so that we can have a discussion um and i agree uh, no, I just, I was just getting impatient. That's why I started pushing it. Well, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm not, that's why I'm supporting whatever you want to do so that we have some flexibility. Jack, can you hear us? Well, he moved yeah. around. He moved, he did move around a little there. Good. Huh. We saw a microphone go on. All right, I'll, I can call him in the morning. I'm sorry, Jack. So, so do you want me to put the two of you, are you gonna take a vote to put $150,000 in that as a sum? Make a motion that we put $150,000 into, what article is it? Article number, whatever article number it is. Article, hold on. The article for Monday is six. Yeah. Article six. I just printed it. I printed a copy. For the article for the church repairs. Thank you, Skip. Yeah, so it's Article 6. Thanks, Skip. We are. I apologize to you. And yeah, I had 120. And just, so you want to do 150? Yeah. 150. Well, okay. at town meeting, they can always reduce it, but we can't increase it. Right. And we had put a sum of money in the request. Can we, can we, can we do that? Can we actually 
Yes. Yes. We asked the attorney if we could do that. Yes. Why don't you, why don't you do something like 250000 and plan on bringing it down, but at least at this point, I'm sort of Well, because, yes, but Skip, we don't, we, we just went to the planning board and told them that we weren't doing anything other than, I mean, we wanted to cover the accessibility issues and do some minor repairs. If we if we put in for 250, that's changing potentially changing what we just said to the planning board. And I and I feel uncomfortable at this point because we haven't had enough discussion of what we're going to do. Are we putting the seniors or are we having a community center senior center at the church? Or are we going to you know mediate uh, remediate the um, current senior center? That hasn't really been decided yet. So. I feel more comfortable putting in, you know, 150 to cover what the estimates are for the accessibility projects. And then we can always come back in the spring for more if that's where we're going to go. But we might end up discussing and deciding to put gutters on the a senior center, remediate the mold, and hopeful, hope that the mold doesn't come back, you know, in a way that you know, remediate it in a way that will be successful, hopefully. I don't know. In, the mold has been an ongoing problem for quite a while and having the building closed down over COVID really exasperated it. And so we really need to figure out how we're gonna dry out that building. And if we can successfully dry it out, then that building would be useful. Are we gonna use it for a senior center and a, a community center? Who knows? I mean, there. I really like some of the ideas that David's had. So I don't feel comfortable investing a whole bunch of money until we have a concrete vision plan. I don't have a vision in my mind, so I don't wanna commit a lot of money to it. And so just saying 250 is just out of, pulling it out of the sky is not, I, I feel not supportive of that. Well, we have an estimate that's a, uh, that's a little shy of 120. I gave him yeah. a copy. Of Thank it, you. Yeah. My, my point was, if, if between now and Monday, something changes, and one of these estimates goes up, and there isn't enough money. That's a valid point. That's, the, that's really the question. Well, that's why I'm saying 150, because that also that has a contingency built into it already at the 115. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm figuring 35,000 is a. So a, the funding source is written as free cash right now. Hi, Julie. Problem, isn't it? Pardon? That's another problem, right? No, free cash came in. Oh, we did. One point, what was it, Julie? 1.19? 1. Oh, I it was wrote just it. shy of 1.3, but yeah, 1.27. Oh, okay. okay. I was going to say 1.3, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I, almost. I sent you an email about it. Um, yeah. it. It was within the range that you had sort of estimated. So you had a motion on the floor. Did you guys take a vote? We have not. No, we didn't make them. No, did we make a motion for the 150? I did. I he did. made a motion. motion. Okay, then I said I will second that. I'm sorry, I didn't realize any I seconded it. Any further discussion? All no. those in favor? I, Carolyn. Said no, and then I, Carolyn. So. Yeah. Oh, yes. I raised my hand. Yes. Yes. Oh. So you weren't saying no to us. You're saying no to one no. of the grandkids. No, no. I was saying yes. Yes. No, to okay. the <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, no one's here at the moment. <laughs> oh. It's okay. too late. Okay. Everybody's no, in I bed. will make that change. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we've got a meeting scheduled for five o'clock. This so is the select board over five fifteen. Okay. And the select board has a meeting at five, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fine. You don't have to convene at five, but we did schedule it for five so that you had some time to chew on it if you needed to. Yeah. Well, 
I think it's always good to be, have a posted meeting just in case. Did you see me cringe? No, it's fine. Don't so worry. It's on our agenda. So that's. Hold on. We do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was my last question about the warrant was confirming the number so that I could finalize. I have a couple questions for Lisa that I'll run past her tomorrow so that we can finalize the motions. Just ask her now tomorrow if the uh, cabin line can prove I will. Can do a consensus. I will. Okay. So, and I'll talk to Jack. Okay. That's what I had. All right. Did you have anything you were wanted to know, Julie? Um, do we have, do we want to talk about the, the church organ tonight or no? No, it's not on the agenda. It's okay. on the agenda for the sixth. Okay. Um, I did have a request from um, Jay um, Stryker to, he wants to play the organ for um, different events. And he is, um, he's very musical, but he also is very mechanical. And so I think he should, you know, be using the organ until we can find a home for it, um, just because he can keep it not I'm not sure if he can keep it in tune, but he will, by using it, he will keep it in better condition. So um, I didn't know we should probably put that on the agenda to allow him, you know, to use, so use we it. We have a discussion on the six about declaring it surplus declaring property. It on, I know, uh, I know. Surplus, so we'll have Do we actually have a that. home for it? Do we actually have a home for it? You have to declare it surplus property first. You have to declare it first. Okay. But. All right. I'll talk to Jay and see um, how he feels. Uh, the historic commission is, or committee is. That was donated to the church by Dr. Kenneth Wright. Back in the day. Yeah, well, I, I, I wanna make sure that it goes to a good home, but. Yeah. Um, all right. instrument. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. Okay, so I will finalize the motions tomorrow. Okay. And I'll make you guys copies. And Julie, I'll make copies once they're final after I have a last conversation with Lisa and I'll leave them in the foyer for you guys. Is that okay? Unless you That's want to come in and I can leave them in your boxes. You tell me what you want to do. Foyer's great. Okay. Thanks. I probably will bring them with me. On Monday. <laughs> Anything else? No. Carolyn? No, I'm fine. We had a well. Hey, I should, for the I record, a motion then. Okay, for the record, though, I just want to say we had a wonderful flu clinic today. It was very smooth, even though we had a brand new um, platform, color platform that we use, and everybody was supposed to be signed in. It did go very smooth. We only had a couple glitches. Fortunately, one of them was Mr. Morrow, uh, Mono, I mean, Bill Mono. And, but we got, he got a shot and Lisa calmed him down. So hopefully he had reversed his name and the yeah. system wouldn't kick, wouldn't let him go forward. So it was a little bit of a knuffle there. But other than that, um, it was really good and we had 214 and that's what we did. We did 220 last year when we had that massive huge event at the senior center. So it, it went really well. And hopefully um, everybody had enough experience with the new platform and the, how, uh, the new rollout. And the new rollout is really actually more efficient. And so our throughput was much faster. Um, you know, it was around six or seven minutes, which is amazing. So that was really, that, really that, amazing. That number includes the 25 that Lisa did through the town hall? No, no. Okay. That was separate. We had a separate, um, she had 30 extra doses, high doses in her office for, okay. um, and there's a couple homebounds that she's going to do. So yep. we're, our numbers okay. are going to be similar to next year, to last year, which was a good year, high year. Yep. So I felt good about that. Um, and uh, the 350th had a wonderful, wonderful um, painting. Um, event uh, um, 
to at behind the Tilton Library for fundraising. And um, Stan Adams did a beautiful job with um, the centerpiece and, and catering again. He, was, he does a very nice layout. And so everybody had a good time. So we have positive things happen. <laughs> Not everything is awful. So I will second it. I have no further discussion. And I am in favor. Aye, Carolyn. Motion to adjourn. Aye, Dave. <laughs>